Hello, fellow campers. Welcome to the RV Canucks podcast. As always, I'm Melina, and together with my husband, Dan, and our tween and teen, we are the RV Canucks, a Canadian family based in Southern Ontario who traverse all over North America on a part-time basis and share our tips, tricks, and location reviews from a uniquely Canadian perspective. We even share some epic failures from time to time because everyone needs a good laugh. June has been an epically busy month for the RV Canucks. Camping in Ontario has opened back up, so that means we've had to summarize the trailer. We're in the middle of presenting a four-session RVing series for the Southwestern Ontario Military Family Resource Centre on camping tips. And we are recording some exciting episodes with guest contributors to make sure we're continuing to offer fresh new advice to keep you rolling. We've even managed to sneak in a quick camping trip to blow off the cobwebs. And on a personal note, we're ready to welcome Dan back into the country in the next couple of weeks after his military deployment, so there is a lot happening. With that said, today is episode 34 of the podcast, and we've decided to go all the way back to our archives to episode 4, where we talked about boondocking, to break out part of that episode as a standalone campground review for Bronte Creek Provincial Park. And we've done this for a few reasons. For one, it was difficult to find buried within another topic, which is something we've tried to eliminate as the podcast grows in maturity. And second, because for some odd reason, this park still gets a lot of unjustified hate from the camping community, and we'd love to set the record straight. And for any Americans listening, don't turn it off if you're planning on visiting Toronto or Niagara Falls anytime after the border opens back up, you'll want to keep this park on your radar. As a heads up, we also talk about this park on episode... 12, I believe, which was the five most haunted places we've ever camped. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, go check out that episode. But before we dive in, I'd also like to take a moment and thank you for continuing to send in listener mail, show suggestions, and podcast reviews. It means the world to us to know that we're adding value in the camping space, especially since this is a part-time endeavor and a labor of love for us. A big shout out to Trucker Dave and his wife, who are nearing retirement and looking forward to a potential RV lifestyle as part of their post-retirement plan. Dave is a truck driver by trade and actually wrote to tell us that the toll booths we talk about when we go stateside, which are actually called cash boxes, so thank you Dave for that. Anyway, these cash boxes don't currently have staff or take cash due to COVID, so you actually have to pay online. So this is great info to know because who knows how long this practice will continue post-COVID. So thank you, Dave. That's fantastic for us to keep in our mind bank for when the borders open back up. Dave actually even filled us in on a story about a cash box location that was near a college and resulted in some very college-worthy pranks, including depositing a dead skunk in the cash box. So I suppose anyone with a nose would have been able to bust the guilty parties, or at least I would hope they would. But with that said, let's keep the good times rolling with our trip guide to Bronte Creek Provincial Park, and we will be back in two weeks with a fresh new episode. Happy travels, everyone! We have rounded up our thoughts about our recent stay at Bronte Creek Provincial Park, which I would say was probably one of our more unexpected provincial parks that we've stayed at, meaning it was totally not what we expected it to be, but in a very, very good way. It was a really nice, pleasant surprise, I think. Yeah. Oh, totally. And for those of you who kind of aren't from southwestern Ontario or haven't traveled here a lot, Bronte Creek is a provincial park and it's basically located smack dab in the middle of the city on the western edge of Oakville, which kind of borders Burlington, Ontario. And it's almost a six and a half square kilometer park. You know, it's something that you kind of drive past and kind of think, "Eh, who would camp there, right? Like, don't people know that nature exists type of thing? And this is coming from two people who lived in the GTA. We just kind of, we, we lived there and kind of had never stayed there, just kind of having the, the same thoughts about it. But it's a really fantastic park to stay, great for families, a lot of activities. There's 144 sites there, most of which have electric hookup. Uh, There's four campground loops. There's four group sites that each fit up to 25 people. There's three yurts. The campground side of the park has two comfort stations and the day use area has nine comfort stations. The day use area pretty much dwarfs the campground area in size, I would say. One thing to be aware of is that the day use park and the campground side are kind of separated by a massive ravine that goes down to Bronte Creek and it's 115 feet deep. So there's really no good way to get 
from the campground side to the day use side on foot or on bike. So if you want to visit the day use side and you're camping at Bronte Creek Provincial Park, you kind of have to get in your car and you have to go on the highway and go down one exit and then get off and go around to the day use side. So that's something we spent the better part of a day trying to figure out how to get down to the creek and we couldn't do that until we went to the day use side. But that being said, there's five different trails that total about 10 kilometers in different hiking trails and biking trails. There is a children's farm and activity center there. There is a uh, Victorian farmhouse, the Spruce Lane Farmhouse, which is a museum. And in the operating season, they have costumed interpreters. Now, a lot of those activities aren't running right now because of COVID, but we certainly went through the day use area and were able to see some of these sites. We walked around the farmhouse. We were able to use the trails. They have one of Canada's largest swimming pools. It's a 1.8 acre pool and it's kind of shaped like a pond. It's really cool, actually. It's it's zero entry, and it kind of just gradually goes down like if you were walking into a pond, and the depth in the middle is six feet. Uh, you do have to pay a user fee to visit the pool, even if you are camping, but it is a nominal fee. I think it's like $4 for an adult and $2 for a child or something like that. And there's also, there's an 18-hole disc golf course there, which is kind of cool, like Frisbee golf. Uh, so there's a lot of cool activities to do. They have a ton of events. They run a maple syrup festival every March. There's ghost walks in August at the Spruce Lane Farmhouse, which was kind of cool and kind of creepy because it's right next to the Half Moon Trail. And in the day use area of the park and the ravine, they actually allow you to scatter ashes if that's your jam. So it would be kind of a cool place to do a ghost walk during the summer. There's a harvest festival every September. They do a campground Halloween in October. And of course they have a Victorian Christmas set up at the museum as well. So there is a ton to do for families who want to explore the history of the area and the agriculture and whatnot. As far as the campground itself, what do you think, Dan? I think it was a great place. I think that if you want to explore Toronto and Niagara Falls and you're looking for a base camp, it's a great spot to be. I think that if you want to ride your bike or get out for a run on a few trails that are nice and easily groomed and get some exercise, it's a great place to be. First impressions driving in, I think the roads are nice and smooth. The campsites are pretty spacious. I'd say they're angled in a really good fashion, so it makes easy to back up. I backed in in one shot, which has never happened. So really easy entry for, for RV sites. And I think just riding around, I think most of the campsites look pretty level, reasonably good privacy. Listen, if you want shade, there's some shaded sites. If you want a nice big sunny site, there's some sunny sites. So I think there's a little bit of something for everybody. I don't think we were too far from a water tap, which meant we could kind of just top off with the water jug into the fresh water. From a practical standpoint, I would say as you you depart the park the dump station and the filling station for fresh water are both in line with each other so it's only one dump station only one filling station so if somebody is filling water in front of you and you've just finished dumping you're going to have to wait for them to finish before you can move on but hey like we told you in our previous episode don't be in a rush at the dump station or when you fill and somebody's dumping you'd have to wait before you can go in and fill but really listen I went there a couple of times to dump the lugaloo the honey wagon and I didn't run into anybody so it never cost us a problem I don't think right but when you go in to camp you're kind of basically doing a u-turn and you're exiting the park to fill up and then you have to do another u-turn and come back into the park to make it to your site so that's just something to be aware of i mean the corners were tight but they weren't they weren't inaccessible by a, a larger rv by any stretch oh yeah and i think the other thing i would tell you is listen at the dump station they have your normal hose there for rinsing things off they also have a connector for you to connect up to your black water flush out if that's what you have on your rig but you do have to provide your own hose for that so from a practical aspect, I thought this was a pretty well laid out park and probably a good spot, you know, just to get started, especially if you don't have a ton of experience and you don't want to go too far from home in the GTA. Mm -hmm. For when we went to visit, you know, obviously we're in the midst of COVID still, but they actually had every second campsite, give or take, was blocked off or not available to reserve in, not in every area of the, of the park, but certainly in areas where the campsites were a little bit closer together, just to keep people separated and, and practice some of that social distancing, which I thought was great. But if you do want to go this year in 2020, keep in mind that, you know, close to half of the sites aren't going to be available at this time. And one other thing I noted as we were going around and riding our bikes, which we thought was cool given the age of our kids, but in the 300 loop, 
Uh, you have a lot of sites that back onto the ravine trail. And let me tell you, this ravine is steep. It is like straight down steep. So if you have smaller kids or animals that wander, you probably might want to choose a different loop or just beware of the fact that at the back of those campgrounds, you do go right onto the ravine trail and it is a, quite a steep drop. So that was one thing I just noticed from a mother's perspective. Yeah, so that was Brawny Creek. I think it, I would definitely return. Yeah, I think it makes you think differently about how you can use your RV. We've talked about road trips. We've talked about weekend trips. We've talked about your typical nature camping. This is the first time we've probably used it to go into the city to do something, to cut down on commute time, save on hotel costs. And, and the whole reason we were down there is our youngest daughter was in a goalie camp. And this really made that whole experience a whole lot easier and more enjoyable for everybody. It really did. It was fantastic. And even being in the middle of the city, we were kind of in the middle of the meteor shower that went on earlier this month. And we managed, well, I didn't manage to see any because I somehow happened to be looking in the wrong direction every single time there was a meteor. But Dan and the girls certainly saw a number of meteors in the sky, which we didn't think we would be able to being kind of in the midst of the city with all of that ambient light. So that was kind of cool too. And that is our review of Bronte Creek Provincial Park. I will put links in the show notes to all of the things we've talked about, all of the reservation sites. And of course, we'll do our campground review and write-up of Bronte Creek where you can see some images and some other amenities of the park. Last episode, we did say that we were going to answer our listener question on solar power. However, we decided to move that to next week's episode, which we are going to be focusing on a really good walkthrough of your trailer. So if you have just bought a trailer new or you bought it used and didn't quite get a great walkthrough, we're gonna kind of look at some of the basic things, the basic operating systems of your trailers or your RVs and kind of how to navigate them. You're gonna learn from our mistakes, folks. You're gonna <laughs> learn from our mistakes. For sure. So I think it kind of fits a little bit better to put that solar power, tag that onto that conversation. So we are going to move that to episode five next week. So that being said, Thanks for joining us. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe so you get notified when future episodes come out and follow us always on Instagram at RV Connects. We are going to be heading off at the end of this week for another adventure and we'll have lots of images up there and more to talk about. So thanks again for joining us. Bye. Bye folks. Bye.